So they put you in charge of an art museum that looks like this. But of course, people are going to try and steal the art, so you hire guards to just stand there and make sure nothing bad happens. But each guard can only see one part of the museum, so you need multiple guards throughout the museum to make sure that every spot is visible to at least one of the guards. So our goal here is to find the minimum number of guards that we need to make sure that every spot in the museum is covered. Shown here is a solution with 5 guards, even though one with 4 is possible. Now even though this specific art museum isn't that hard to figure out, this problem is quite complex. There is no formula, but we can find an upper bound. What I mean by that is we can find some number of guards that will always work. This might not be the minimum number of guards, but at least we won't get stolen from. This upper bound can be found by counting the vertices of the polygon, dividing by 3, then ignoring the remainder. So 10 guards is definitely enough for any museum with 32 vertices, even though it is possible to cut that number down to say, 5 or 4. Now let's see where this formula for the upper bound came from. We're going to draw another polygon to use as an example, and we're going to triangulate it. This means to divide it into triangles only, which is always possible for every polygon. Here's the tricky part. We're going to color in the vertices of this polygon so that no two neighboring vertices can have the same color. And we're only going to use three colors. We start by coloring two neighboring vertices, and from then on, we look at another vertex that touches both those vertices, and since we can't use any of those two vertices' colors, we pick the third color that hasn't been used yet, and then we repeat this for the whole polygon. Hopefully this gives you some intuition as to why we can three-color the vertices in this way, and if you try it yourself, it'll make more sense to you. Anyway, the rest is smooth sailing, we just count the vertices. All that's left to do now is to realize that each triangle has three different colors as its vertices, because two neighboring vertices can't have the same color. So if we put a guard at every blue vertex in the polygon, then those guards will be able to see the whole polygon because they can see every triangle. The blue vertexes are a part of every triangle. The same thing is true for the green and red vertices, and we simply pick which color has the least number of vertices so that we can have the least number of guards. This matches up to the divide by 3 and remove the remainder thing we saw earlier. So now we have an upper bound, but can we get a lower bound? That is, can we get a number of guards that will never ever work? The answer is no. This is because of convex polygons, which are polygons that don't have a cave that points inward like Pac-Man. A single guard can see the entirety of the polygon, so there's no lower bound. Well, I guess the lower bound is 1, but that's ridiculous, because zero guards obviously can't see anything. Now let's look at a similar problem called the fortress problem, where instead of checking the inside of the polygon, we want to make sure we fill the outside. Think of it like a bunch of medieval soldiers protecting a fortress from an army of moles that might dig up anywhere outside the fortress. Each soldier would be able to check the ground that they can see, everything in their line of sight, and check it for moles. This problem can be split up into two problems. One of them is where the guards can be anywhere outside the fortress, and the other one is where the guards can only be on the boundary of the fortress, so they must be touching the polygon. And you can see here the upper bounds for each of those two scenarios. This weird bracket thing is called the floor function, and it's the largest integer that's less than that number. For example, the floor of 5.5 .5 is equal to 5. You basically just remove the fractional part of the number. Let's take a look at one more problem, which will be about orthogonal polygons. These are just polygons with 90 degree angles. Using this fact, we can get a tighter upper bound, which is just a more accurate upper bound. For example, we get 8 here, which is closer to 4 than 10 was. Anyway, I hope you found that somewhat interesting, and I'll see you in the next video.